Hey, Lisa. Oh, it's you. Sorry, were you worried? A little, yeah. Seeing you like that just kind of reminded me of that night in Nord. Oh, right. Ugh, I'm so pathetic. I keep going on about how I'm going to be independent, but then I get all worked up over something as trivial as this. Seeing the city from above at night is really something, though. And to think, you got to take in a beautiful view like this every night growing up. Yeah, I guess so. It used to be my grandfather, my father, and my mother here. Then after my father died, Sharon joined us. But through the years, my family has always enjoyed seeing the lighted windows of Ruhr at night. Something that never changed, huh? I guess it is to you what Ymir's mountains are to me. <laughs> Maybe every family has something like that. Still, first my grandfather left. And now Sharon and I aren't here most of the time either. Mother just stays here all on her own. Every time I think of that, I just feel like crying. It breaks my heart. I can't understand why she chooses to be so alone. I thought so. You're not just angry at her then. <laughs> well, she gets under my skin, that's nothing new. But if I was in her place, I don't know how I'd cope. couldn't live like she does, losing herself in her work all alone with no friends or loved ones by her side? She wasn't like that before, back when my dad was still alive. She's always been a career woman, but back then she was kind, funny. She had this warmth, you know? Ever since Dad passed away, she hasn't been the same. Work became her life. She pushed Grandfather out as chairman, all for what? More work? I've never seen her indulge herself. Not even once. If she isn't dining with some business partner, she eats nutrition bars instead of meals. Sharon scolds her for it, but... That's how she is. And that's why I'm scared. I don't want life to just pass her by. That's really sweet, Elisa. Where did that come from? You're always looking out for the people in your life. Even when they get on your nerves, you still care about them. It's like how you and I were at first, or how you were with Laura and Fee. I still remember how you told me off for hurting my sister's feelings. You 
You've been keeping an eye out for Milliam all this time, too. And you should know that we're all really grateful to you for it. Especially me. <sighs> I'm worried about what's happening here in Ruwer, too. This is your home, and your mother might be caught up in whatever's going on. I think we should look into it. What do you say? What? But with all our field study tasks, where would we find the time? Why not do it while we're out handling those? Making some headway is always better than making none, right? I mean, I'm not the only one who feels this way. Everyone else does too. Fee cares. So does Elliot. Machias does too. Even Crow's been concerned about you. We can use our time in the city to poke around and find out more about what's going on. You know, kind of like we always do. Well... If you say so, but I'll save the thanks for later. Hmm, I doubt Sharon will tell us anything, no matter how much we pester her. But I'll ask around and see if anyone I know has any idea what might be going on. It shouldn't be too late to give some of them a call, at least. Alright, I'll leave the info gathering to you. Once we get our task list tomorrow, we can discuss how we want to do this. Alright. Anyway, I think I'm going to start calling my contacts. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. If I were you, I wouldn't go around stroking girls' heads like that. I mean, you don't just go whispering sweet nothings into any girl's ear, do you? This isn't so different, really. Huh? Uh, oh, I guess you're right. Sorry, it's something I always did to my sister when she was feeling down. But now that you mention it, she did seem to resent it more as she got older. When I stopped doing it, she called me insensitive and got all upset anyway. I think your sister and I would have a lot to talk about. But anyway, I'll see you later. Alright. <laughs> 